All righty. Well, good morning and thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and get started right at 10 a.m. Um, for time purposes and to give our presenters enough time to share not even just about UNCW, but their specific areas. So welcome to our Seahawks Connect virtual event specifically for Wake Tech students. I'm going to briefly go through kind of our schedule of the event um, and feel free throughout to use that chat, chat feature to ask questions, but of course we will have a Q&A at the very end. Um, to start, my name is Sydney Mazuka. I am a transfer student success coordinator for UNCW, specifically the Raleigh or Central North Carolina area. I do house uh, most of my hours at Wake Tech Mondays and Tuesdays, so if you ever wanted to stop on by, that is a great time to do that. So of course, we're here to welcome you. Then we will hear from our diversity initiatives representative. She's actually one of our own. And then Cameron School of Business, the College of Health and Human Services, Watson College of Education, our Honors College, Financial Aid, Career Center, and then I'll go through the transfer application process. And as I mentioned, of course, a Q&A session at the end. Real quickly, just before I let my presenters dive in, I wanted to just give you a glance at UNCW as a whole so you kind of understand the college and where, where we come from. So we've got 18, just over 18,000 students, putting us at about a mid-size um, institution. So just, in my opinion, the perfect size. So 14,000 of over undergrad students. And then we have 58 baccalaureate level degrees. So of course, you're gonna hear from our um, three of our four colleges today, so a lot of those programs will be covered, and then we do have 35 master's degrees and four doctoral. And real quickly, just to break down that population specifically for transfer students, um, we do have around 2,000 transfer students come every fall with a 45% transfer welcome rate. So that's meaning about 50%, just less than 50% of our incoming students are transfer students. So an incredible welcoming transfer community, in my opinion. Um, you're definitely not alone, not the only one transferring. And then as far as military goes, we're extremely military friendly. So about 70% of our student body is military affiliated, which is great. And then 63% of our transfer students are coming from a community college just like Wake Tech. So again, you're not alone. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn over the floor to our first presenter, Tasha Jones, and she is with the admissions office and will be covering diversity initiatives. Tasha, you can take it away. Hey, Tasha, you are muted still. Okay. All right. Thank you. So two years into the pandemic and still don't remember to unmute myself. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, great. So as I was saying, um, I am the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions for Diversity Initiatives. Um, my position is relatively new and has only been around for about a year and a half. Um, we also created a Senior Counselor for Diversity Initiatives just to continue to improve UNCW's focus on um, welcoming more diverse students to our Seahawk community. Now, while my position is uh, relatively new, um, I have worked in the in admissions or enrollment management for over 15 years. I am a two-time graduate of UNCW, um, receiving both my bachelor's and master's from this fine institution. Um, so UNCW was literally the only four-year institution I applied to. I am a Wilmingtonian, meaning I am a, a native of Wilmington. Um, I lived in a single parent household and did not want to put a financial burden on my mom. So I said, hey, if I was not getting into UNCW, I'm going to Cape Fear Community College and transfer after two years um, to a four year university. So with my time as a student and a staff, I've been affiliated with UNCW for over 20 years. Um, and I have been around the block with my institution. So um, I know my institution more than ever right now is committed to recruiting and retaining a diverse student population. It is our highest strategic priority. Uh, UNCW, we're collaborating with faculty, staff, 
students and even alumni um, to be more purposeful in our approach to enhancing diversity, equity, um, and inclusion on our campus. We've also um, implemented uh, pipeline programs to um, not only recruit students, but to recruit and retain diverse faculty. Um, we, I know um, diverse students would like to see um, diverse faculty and staff in their classroom. So that is something that we're definitely working on as well. Um, we also have new um, learning communities that are focused on black history, culture, um, developing an Africana studies majors. We're developing other bridge type programs um, to um, help, um, you know, students of color or students who are from rural areas to better transition into um, the UNCW community. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we recently have expanded our diversity resource centers um, that includes Central Hispano, the Upper Minute African American Cultural Center, and the Mohan Schultz LGBT Plus Resource Office. In addition to their expansions, as far as you know, the size of physical place, um, they have hired more staff to help better, better serve our current students. Um, we saw a need for it um, and um, we, we worked to get it. So um, that's something new and exciting. Um, they offer various cultural programmings. Most of the office has mentoring, pro, uh, mentoring programs that you can participate in. Um, so um, that's definitely something I would encourage you to look further into. Um, we have over 15 multicultural student organizations. We have study abroad, again, menta mentoring programs. Um, we have contacts with community-based organizations. So if you um, have worked with community-based organizations in your area, um, we, we work with a number that we can um, connect you to. Um, we, including organizations like um, representatives from the Native American population. Um, so that's, that's one um, relationship that we have worked to establish over the years and gaining momentum as we speak. Uh, we have historically black fraternities and sororities. Um, so again, there's a multitude of things that you can do, multitudes of resources, different type um, educational program. I, must, I mentioned Africana studies, but we also have a, a Native American studies minor, um, an Asian studies minor. Um, so we have things academically for you and things for you as a student. So just to kind of wrap it up, because I want to make sure all the other presenters have um, their time. You know, looking back, I think I would have been just as successful, if not more, attending a community college before going to UNCW. I think you all are actually in a place of advantage and um, you are just as important to us as traditional students. I hope you decide to become a Seahawk and I will be glad to answer any questions you have um, towards the end of the presentation, but feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat as they come to mind. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tasha. We'll go ahead and transition to our Cameron School of Business. So we've got Chris presenting on our Cameron School of Business. And Chris, you can go ahead and take it away. All right, thanks, Sydney. Thanks for having me. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to attempt to share with some information about our business school. Um, so as Sydney said, I am an academic advisor with the Cameron School of Business here at UNCW. Um, I'm going to just give you a little bit of information about the programs, um, some student programs that we have, concentrations, graduate degrees, and a uh, little extracurriculars we offer as well. So uh, some general information about the Cameron School of Business. Of the undergraduates we have on campus, there's a little over 2,000 undergraduates studying uh, business. We are AACSB accredited, which is the highest accreditation you can achieve as a business school. So you're getting that quality education here at UNCW with the Cameron School of Business. We offer multiple concentrations. There's 12 different business concentrations. We offer everything from accounting and finance and business analytics and economics uh, to um, a more tech side like management information system and supply chain management over to entrepreneurship and business development if you wanna own your own business 
Um, you can actually develop a business model as part of your program, um, or even if you just want to manage small businesses and help small businesses, doesn't necessarily mean you need to own your own. We have that program. We also have marketing, uh, two divisions there, professional selling and marketing strategy. Strategy, you're going to look into the research and economics of marketing and demographics. Professional selling, you're really going to learn how to sell a product, and build your profit margins. On the people side, there is a human resource management concentration as well as management and leadership. So this is where you learn how to manage people, build a team and let that team work together and do a good job. Human resource management, you'll study labor relations, equity and diversity in the workforce if you're interested in human resource management. And then we also have a international business concentration. And this concentration is really diverse. You get great experience studying abroad you get great experience learning another language. You also combine your international business concentration with other concentrations, say with business analytics or global distribution and logistics. So it's a very, you'll learn international business management, economics, international finance. Uh, so that's a great program to get into if you're looking to travel around the world and really build that diverse background. Um, the three degrees that we offer. So the way the program works is you will receive a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration and with a concentration in one of the above mentioned concentrations. So you do get the business degree, which allows you to under, to get a core development in management, marketing, accounting. You're going to learn to take all these courses and then really focus in by the time you're a junior and senior on the concentrations that you want to pursue. Uh, we also have a Bachelor of Arts in Economics. Typically, this is for students who want to go into economics specifically. There's way more economics courses you will take as opposed to the other general business courses uh, like accounting and management, that sort of thing. Typically, sometimes these students do go on into graduate school to study law, corporate law. Um, so this is more of a, this is a degree to build up specifically for economics and graduate studies. And then we also offer the Bachelor of Science in Information Technology. We offer some business minor programs. If you're looking to study something else at UNCW and not necessarily business, but you want some business background, we do offer the minor that you can attach to another degree. A little bit more about the school. We really encourage study abroad programs. We have a lot of faculty-led study abroad programs, which allow for the students to travel abroad, learn from UNCW faculty and other business faculty, and usually those courses seamlessly transfer back to UNCW, so you're not losing any credits. Um, you can also, we also encourage you, if you aren't going to follow a faculty-led study abroad, our education abroad office works really closely with us. Um, and we, and you can work with your advisor when you're here to make sure that the courses you are taking will transfer back to UNCW so you can get a great experience studying abroad, usually at a lower price than if you were to go on your own. Um, so you get to experience other cultures, uh, areas that you always wanted to go to and learn business and earn credit. So we highly encourage study abroad um, opportunities. A couple other programs we offer with the Cameron School of Business, um, we offer several networking events. Our biggest program is the Cameron Executive Network. This is something specific to UNCW where we, you, can't, you can participate once you are into your concentration and you really wanna know what you wanna study. So for instance, if you really wanna study supply chain or distribution and logistics in you know, a world of Amazon and uh, global economy, uh, you, you will be matched with a mentor in that area. So this mentor is somebody who's in the industry, both locally or nationally maybe, and um, they will actually volunteer their time to help you learn your expertise. Uh, this is a great way to build connections and get that extra experience on your resume. We also offer Business Week. We host Business Week. This is a week on campus that is huge. It is open to every major on campus. Um, and this is a big event where we bring in national leaders and have a conference for students to attend. A lot of them will be dressed in their suits, bring in their resumes. You never know who you're going to work with and meet. 
And it's also an opportunity to get on the cutting edge of what's happening in the business world outside of the classroom and what's actually going on. Uh, so those are the great conferences to attend. Uh, so look for those whenever they're whenever you're here. We also offer several student organizations and a lot of them like to get into real world applications. So we have an investment fund that is managed by students who want to take part in a finance investment fund. We also have the business plan competition where you can pitch your business idea and there's competition and prizes. This is usually open to students all across campus. Um, so if you're interested, if you have that entrepreneurial mindset or the innovative mindset, uh, even if it's we have several students will want to be studying computer science, but they want to develop an app and see how it works on the business end. They love taking part in those business plan competitions. So you can see how it helps a wide range of students. Um, a lot of students will take trips to the New York Wall Street if they're invest if they're interested in finance. Um, unfortunately, it has been a little postponed. Some trips have been postponed due to COVID, but we're, we're slowly getting back to all this, which is great. Um, if you're interested in accounting, we have volunteer income tax assistance programs where you can go in the community and help people less fortunate with their tax, um, with their taxes during tax season. So we have a lot of programs that you can get into that can add that little extra notch on your resume. And um, these are the sort of things that you want to be looking into uh, whenever you whenever you get to the university um, education, as well as experience as much as you can. Uh, so I think that is it for me. Um, I look forward to answering your questions at the end. And um, I hope you choose UNCW. Thanks so much, Chris. Next up, we're gonna have Shin from our College of Health and Human Services. So Shin, you can go ahead and take it away. All right, hello everyone. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, my name is Kirk Shin Saturnipsi, I go by Shin. Um, and I'm the Student Success Coordinator uh, in the College of Health and Human Services. I'm gonna um, share my screen. Um, <laughs> so um, our college was established in 2010, and our purpose is to um, impact the health and well-being um, of North Carolina residents. So our mission is actually really simple. You know, our goal is to get students that want to enhance the, the health and quality of life. Um, so that's really what we do. And I'm going to quickly jump into our, our undergraduate majors and our graduate programs for students who want to stay beyond uh, the undergraduate experience and to get a um, graduate uh, degree. So we have several undergraduate majors in our School of Health and Applied um, Human Sciences, also known as Shaw's. We have public health, exercise science, respiratory therapy, which is growing, especially because of COVID. Um, lots of people need respiratory therapy, so it's a growing um, pathway as well. We have helpful living and fitness education, recreation therapy, tourism, um, recreation and sport. It used to be called recreation, sport, and tourism, but now it's called tourism, recreation, and sport. Then we have the School of Nursing, of course, for those who want to get a nursing degree, but also to go on the clinical research side um, as well. So that's with the School of Nursing. And then we have the School of Social Work, and you know, you can get a bachelor's in social work. We also have several minors to enhance our majors. We have a wonderful assistant uh, dog training, and that's really to help um, people who have disabilities and who have you know, traumatic, traumatic brain injuries, things like that. Um, you can actually uh, do that um, as a minor. For those who wanna go into working in clinical research, um, who wanna work with pharmaceutical companies, et cetera, we have a clinical research minor. Um, we have gerontology, as a lot of our population is aging, and. Um, you know, just looking what should we do to help that population. That's a great um, minor as well. So it's several different minors. Again, there's health minor, tourism, recreation, sport, and then also yoga studies. These are all minors to complement um, our purpose of helping um, people have a better, better quality of life and better health. Now on the graduate side, we have several programs uh, that students can go into. We have applied gerontology, athletic training, clinical research and product development, health care administration, physical education and health. In our school of nursing, we have the nurse educator. 
um, and the doctor of nurse practice, the DNP. And then for school social work with the master's in social work, the MSW. And then we have a couple post back certifications in clinical research operations and gerontology. Um, our, we, what we have in CHES, we have what is called a student success center, um, where the purpose of that is to enrich the student experience. And our, the main purpose of our student success center is to provide support to students as they go through their undergraduate experience. And that's what we do. And we actually have four advisors. Um, if you have questions as I'm going through this presentation, just drop those questions in the chat. We have Chelsea, um, Leticia, and Denisha and Carrie are on here today. And if you just drop Ches, uh, CHHS um, in your question, they can answer any of those questions as they come up um, in the chat area. So back to the Student Support Center, I just wanna kind of quickly walk you through some of the support services that we give to students. Um, when they become students in CHES. Um, we, of course, do academic advising, um, mapping out courses, et cetera. But we do other things like workshops, um, graduate school preparation, uh, referral to other campus offices, um, drop-in appointments, et cetera. And uh, one of the things that we are doing, which is actually a campus-wide initiative, um, and it started uh, piloted um, as a relaunch this fall is pre-health coaching. So if you are in any of the pathways that um, will lead you to uh, get a um, advanced degree after your time in UNCW, um, like pharmacy, allopathic medicine, if you wanna go to med school, chiropractic, physical therapy, occupational therapy, physician assistant, optometry, public health, osteopathic medicine, veterinary medicine, or dentistry, you can get paired with um, a support staff member who can actually help you um, develop a competitive profile during your time here um, so that you will be competitive going to those programs. So we do everything like um, helping you identify your references, understanding how to connect to those references, um, understanding how to pick competitive programs, how to build a competitive uh, profile, we help you prepare for summer competitive opportunities, which many of them pay uh, very well for you to gain experience to go into these uh, pathways. So these are some of the things that we work with you on um, in pre-health coaching, and you have access to that um, as a CHES student as well. Um, all CHES majors require hands-on learning, um, such as clinical field experience and internships. Typically, it'd be about your junior year, but for some students, as, as early as your sophomore year. So uh, those things can be something like studying abroad, doing some research and innovation, also community service. Um, and your advisors will work to make sure that these things are also integrated in, in your faculty as well into your um, experience. Um, I already talked about the job, um, I said the job, the dog training program. So I'm going to kind of skip over that um, a little bit because as part of our minor, uh, we do have some additional student involvement opportunities. One is called Access of Wilmington. Um, it's a recreational partnership to help, again, uh, veterans and people with disabilities. Um, and really, it's just to impact their quality of life. So doing things like softball, scuba diving, um, baseball, things like that, all those things to help um, those who have experienced um, disabilities, some traumatic, um, and to help them with their quality of life. So if you want to learn more about SSC and the College of Health and Human Services, you could definitely visit our website, uncw.edu slash chess slash SSC. Um, we also have an email chess at uncw.edu. So that's all I got. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jen. And guys, feel free if you have any questions, you can definitely, um, like she mentioned, throw them in the chat and they're always happy to answer them during the different presentations. But from here, I'll have Dean Heath go ahead and take over from our College of Watson Education. All right, so good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I am Dean Heath, I'm from the Watson College of Education, and uh, I'm sharing uh, just a little bit of a presentation. Um, I tend to talk fast because I've got a lot of information to give. So feel free to pop your questions in the chat. I will be here after, um, after my session's over to handle questions during the formal Q&A. Um, but just to give you an idea of who I am, um, 
I attended UNCW many times, as you can see, but I was also a college transfer student myself from uh, the community college. And uh, UNCW was my first choice. Unfortunately, I was not UNCW's first choice, but I knew I wanted to be here. Um, and I took the opportunity to start at the community college and transfer over. And I, I do not look back upon that time uh, in any negative regard. It helped me to become the person I am now. And I have uh, gained so much from my experience at the community college and UNCW. So um, I was a business major for undergrad. Uh, I came back and got my graduate degree uh, in higher education because I like working with college students. Uh, and I'm working on another degree right now. So um, I can talk to you from many different perspectives. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out. So we are an education college like no other. Of course, we have high quality programs. Our faculty are amazing. Every one of our faculty have taught in the area uh, that they are teaching you in. So all of our elementary education faculty have been kindergarten through sixth grade teachers. All of our special education professors have been special education teachers. So they know what questions you're gonna ask before you ask, uh, and they're gonna support and mentor you and, and make sure that you're the best educator possible. Uh, our programs all require field experiences and they are early and often. So that way, if you get into that, uh, that third grade class and you're thinking, oh, maybe I don't actually want to teach elementary education, there's still time for you to, uh, to see what else is out there. Maybe, uh, maybe kindergarten, maybe sixth grade, whatever, um, or maybe moving on to middle grades or secondary or uh, special education or phys ed education, you know, whatever the case may be. There are lots of great opportunities for you to experience education. We've got a great partnership network, um, over 200 schools in our partnership. So if you wanna experience a big school or a small school or a school with lots of tech or a school really into the arts, uh, there are opportunities there. And then of course we support you after you've graduated and you have your own classroom. So average class size in Watson, 20 students per class. And we've got a beginner teacher support program that supports you for your first three years plus. So as you are in your own classroom and you have questions, curiosities, a situation you need a little help with, uh, we've got a whole support team ready to, to help you out with all of that. This is Teacher Legacy Hall. And um, basically when you come in our front doors, you get this great open space. Um, and as you go through our building, which I hope you'll all take uh, advantage of coming to see us live, we've got a lot of events coming up. Um, but you can see we've got different exhibits on the walls to check out, uh, three floors of education, and our education lab is actually at the very end of this hallway, and I'm going to discuss it in uh, much greater detail. Uh, there we are. Uh, so we also have a student success center, and these are your education advisors. Uh, they're here for uh, academic progress, scheduling. They also work with student engagement. They've got a newsletter that they produce. Um, and they work with student leadership. So there are, are clubs to get involved in. There are student groups that you can be involved in. Um, there are opportunities if you're a writer to write for our newsletter. There are amazing folks that are going to be with you every step of the way. I'm not going to go through all of these, but we are always top five in the state of North Carolina for educator preparation programs. The state of North Carolina does list us as an exemplary designation. Only seven institutions in North Carolina carry that designation. Uh, there are opportunities to customize your education. Uh, we've been the recipient of the Krista McAuliffe Award for Teacher Excellence. That award is given to two schools in the country every year. Um, and obviously, our graduates have a strong record for getting jobs because well, number one, there's a teacher shortage in North Carolina, but more importantly, the principals, the superintendents, the HR folks, they love having our students because they know the type of students that go through our programs and they know the type of teachers that we graduate out into their schools. This is our ed lab. Uh, we were the first university in North Carolina to have an ed lab, and we're still one of the only ones. Uh, but we do tutoring in here for the community. So if you are, uh, if you know somebody who has a third grader, a sixth grader, an eighth grader, uh, whatever, in the Wilmington area, they could actually sign up to have tutoring done in our ed lab. And our students use that as their first experience with teaching. Um, it's an amazing place. I love it in there. 
uh, but it's got a technology center inside. They've got great manipulatives. They've got their own library, a curriculum material center. It's a fantastic place. So these are our majors. Education of young children, that's birth through kindergarten. Special education is K through 12. Elementary education, K through six. Middle grade, six through nine. Secondary is high school. Uh, and then we do have additional programs for foreign language, PE and health, and music. What do we not see here? Well, we don't see art, and I'm going to talk about art here in just a second, uh, but just like uh, the other colleges and schools at UNCW, we also have some minors that we host out of our programs as well. Applied behavior analysis, educational studies, esports, leadership studies, online teaching and learning, and ESL. And um, some of these are really popular with other majors. Uh, ABA is really popular with uh, psychology and sociology. Uh, leadership studies is popular all across the board. And esports has been uh, really popular as of lately. Uh, and obviously online teaching and learning, regardless if you're gonna be a traditional teacher or you just need to convey information in an online format, that's become very popular. So what are the graduate programs we offer? Uh, we've got the Master of Education. If you have a teaching degree and you want to expand your toolbox, uh, School Administration, uh, Master of Science and in Instructional Technology, uh, MATs. So these are for the folks who, you know, they may have always wanted to be a teacher growing up, but decided to go into something else. And uh, they've got that great experience in their field and they decide, you know what, I think I'd like to be a teacher. Uh, and MAT is a great way to uh, get a teaching license at a graduate level. And then we have just started a brand new art MAT if you want to teach art. And then we also offer um, a doc program for educational leadership. So we also offer some international opportunities. Now the university has great uh, study abroad opportunities. These are all faculty led uh, and they're during uh, school breaks. So you're not missing other classes while you're in Japan in the summertime or Belize in the summertime. Uh, but it's a great opportunity for you to go with our faculty and leave a lasting impression on the region because you're, you're in these areas teaching uh, and leaving behind methods that work for you for their teachers. We've got great leadership opportunities for our students, whether you want to be in the International Honor Society or the Watson Student Leaders. There are some great ways to get involved. Uh, there's actually a lot of great financial assistance specifically for educators. We, of course, raise money for scholarships here in Watson, but some of our programs have forgivable loan opportunities where you work in North Carolina uh, and they'll forgive uh, loan uh, amounts. Uh, most of that's um, uh, like $5,000 a year for each year of service. Uh, depending on what county you're from, the Golden Leaf Foundation may be great. The TEACH grant is great. There's so many great ways to, uh, to make your education more affordable. So if you want to transfer from Wake to UNCW, I'm going to suggest you come and see for yourself. Um, so uh, campus tours, whether they're face-to-face -face or virtual, we do offer private visit Watson days where you can come and hang out here. Uh, we've got Watson Preview Day coming up on the 22nd of this month and next month. And we're also offering a future teacher conference on the 6th of April. Uh, all of those are scheduled to be face-to-face, -face, um, but of course you'll want to RSVP ahead of time. So um, if you have questions, stick around. I'll be here for the Q&A session, but if you can't stick around, if you don't have time, scan this QR code or my email address is right here on bottom. I, I look forward to engaging with you very soon. Thank you guys so much um, and uh, hope I hear from, uh, from you all. Great. Thank you so much, Dean. Next up, we're going to hear from our Honors College. I think it looks like, Sean, are you going to take it away? Uh, sure. Thanks. And uh, I think Dr. Mel is going to work the technology. Thanks, Dr. Mel. And she's also going to speak to you. Uh, so that's a tough act to follow. We don't have QR codes or fancy videos in ours. Um, uh, but I want to say a couple quick things. Um, first, I, hopefully you can tell from all the folks that have spoken that uh, this is a really inviting, kind place. Um, we have amazing colleagues here. They're very interested in your success. And the Honors College is no different. I oftentimes wish we could take the word honors out and call it only the Scholars College because what I want you to do is forget everything you know about honors from high school and just press the reset button because this is a really different kind of environment. Um, so we're going to walk through just very briefly some of the things that we do here. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, first and foremost, this is a community and it's meant to be an immediate community, especially 
um, if you're transferring in. It provides, it provides a nice uh, smaller community because this is a bigger school uh, and a nice immediate landing pad for you. Um, so we're gonna walk through some of the benefits for you as a transfer student uh, for honors. First and foremost, it's small classes. You can see on here, our average class size is 16.5 students. Um, that 0.5 student uh, does pretty well, by the way. Um, our classes are capped at 20. And so if you're transferring in needing gen ed classes, you can take some of them in honors with 20 or less versus taking them with uh, a bigger group than that. Um, you also get high access to faculty if you're thinking about um, doing any kind of research. And, and I certainly wasn't as an undergrad, but uh, research, for example, in theater looks really different than creative writing, looks really different than chemistry. Um, really, it's mentorship is what we're talking about with faculty. So a lot of high access to that and wonderful classmates who want to see you succeed and who can show you the ropes in terms of how do you get to where you want to go. Um, it's an incredibly supportive student environment. Um, it, it's, it does not fit with maybe some of the baggage that people think about when they think of honors kids being elitist. Um, this is not a country club kind of environment. We're very welcoming. Um, and really hands-on classes where you're discussing. It's not multiple choice, right? So you get to be, you get to generate the discussion. It's project-based. It's not more work. It's just a different kind of work where we slow the class down and take a deeper dive. Uh, Dr. Mel? Yes. Oh. Yes, so, uh, sorry, I went too far. Okay. Like they were saying at the beginning, after two years in the pandemic, I still don't know how to handle uh, Zoom functions. So, yes, we do want to provide you with um, some extra, I don't say, educate, experience, right? Uh, uh, we want to, I guess we are trying to get students who want to get out more of their college experience. Uh, if you're a type of student who's thinking, you know, I want to focus on my major, I think this is the most important thing. I want to get a very good transcript and go out in the job force. Well, maybe you are, might not see the benefits that can come uh, from an honors experience. But we believe that, you know, you need to be a, a little bit more well-rounded citizen and person and a student. And that's what we try to provide you. So um, at the end of the day, right, you have to think that there are going to be other students in your same major, probably with a similar transcripts, uh, similar, very good grades. But they might not have the honors experience. So that's going to be an added uh, package uh, that you can build or create your story with. So we want you to be good, right, in your studies. So we want you to spend time at the library or whatever it is that you study. But we also want you to do a few other range of things. For example, research. Um, if you're especially thinking about grad school, honors college might be something that you might want to consider. Uh, we have opportunities for you to engage early in undergrad research. Uh, for sure, you will be doing it in your last year, in your senior year, but we have different options where you can do it little by little uh, once you come in, once you transfer to UNCW. Uh, we want you for sure, if you want to, to go abroad. Uh, we have short uh, study abroad experiences. Every semester we have a range of courses. Um, and again, we sent uh, faculty-led trips. I took uh, my students to Spain last December uh, after graduation. Um, so these are about eight days uh, type of experiences and you can do it in August before you come here. Uh, in December, you can do it over spring break or you can do it in May after graduation. And this current semester, we have one course going to Peru, uh, two to Denmark, and we hope that you know, as we move on, that we'll have more of those choices. Uh, also, if you decided to do a whole semester abroad, we will give you credit towards the honors curriculum requirement. So again, we it's not mandatory, but we certainly think it's good for you and that once you try, you will want to do more. Um, we also promote and we hope that you will get engaged with cultural activities. Uh, we sponsor, right? We have, we buy tickets for you to go to events here on campus or outside of campus. We organize trips uh, every fall break to go to Washington DC, uh, spring break to go to Asheville. Again, cultural experiences that may have nothing to do with your major, but certainly are gonna contribute uh, to your education and formation at large. And then typically honors students are some of the most involved in campus. There's plenty 
and this has been said before, plenty of opportunities on campus to get involved in whatever it is that you like. Within honors, we also have several opportunities. You can be an honors mentor for freshman students. Uh, you can be a peer advisor. You can be an ambassador. You can be a student worker here. So there's certainly uh, plenty of those opportunities to get um, more involved outside of the classroom. And Dr. Bingham, you want to take this one? Sure. Um, so I mentioned this before, and this kind of connects with one of the last slides as well. I mean, we don't want you spending 18 hours a day in the library. Um, we want to develop students who are really interested in community and who become leaders. And if you look at every single of the hundreds of clubs on campus, you're going to find honor students involved in all of them. Again, if, when you're transferring in to a school this size, having an immediate community is a wonderful thing, and we like to provide that. Um, and you can get it in a range of different ways. Um, and really here, the key to all of this is conversation. Um, Dr. Mal and I are highly accessible, as are the faculty who teach in honors. They're folks who want to have a conversation with you. They want to get to know you. They want to help you achieve what you want to do. And really, at the end of the day, this is all about how do you develop a compelling story about yourself to tell that moves beyond a transcript. Um, everyone's going to walk into an interview or grad school and have a transcript. But what do you have beyond that is the question um, that is your story. And that's what we're interested in. And I'm gonna skip a little bit ahead. Happy to answer any questions that you might have about particular courses and such later on. Uh, so as far as getting a little bit for a couple of minutes into the weeds of what curriculum you will have to complete in honors if you were to transfer, we have a couple options. If it does, it, it truly depends on how many credits you are bringing in uh, when you transfer. So if you have, this is the blue one, if you have 35 or less, and you have at least a couple of general education requirements still to complete, then you probably want to do the full path, what we call the university honors, the full path uh, curriculum into honors. So that involves uh, several types of classes. It also involves your senior research project in your last year. Uh, so you will be taking um, the HON, those are exclusive uh, type of seminars that you can only take in honors uh, most of times, uh, all the time, interdisciplinary activities beyond the classroom, applied learning, etc. several of them team taught, and these are classes, the HON, that you will not find outside of honors, so they are very unique uh, as far as their topics. And then you will be taking two university studies, which would be classes that you need for your general education requirements. Say that you need your chemistry 101 or an introduction to psychology, you would be taking that class as an honors class. So with 20 students or less, right? And it doesn't mean that our classes have more readings, more books, just because they are honors. So it's not that they're gonna be more difficult. It's just that, well, you're gonna be with 20 students or less. So certainly it's gonna be more discussion oriented, more seminar format. The connections that you can establish with the faculty are certainly gonna be easier and probably stronger than you would in a class with 50, 60, or 100 students. Um, so it's gonna be a different type of learning. So it also depends what type of learning, what type of teaching you thrive the most in. Um, at the end of the day, right, with this full path, the blue curriculum, it says 20 hours here on paper, but actually several of those hours would overlap, right? Because if you are taking your intro to psychology that you need anyways, for your uh, general education requirements, but you are taking it as honors, you are checking two boxes at the same time. Um, some of the credits here for the, your senior research project are also counted towards your major. And this honor selective here is a class that you can take as an upper level class in your major, but with some extra work and we count it as honors. So at the end of the day, you are looking at about eight credits truly that will not overlap with anything else. So, and you know, you might need electives anyways in order to reach to your 120 credits. If you are coming with more than 35 credits, if you have an associate's degree, uh, or if you have almost all, or basically all your uh, general education requirements left, we have what we call it the bridge honors program. And what we try to do there is keep the two things that probably define the most honors. One, research. So you will still be doing that senior research project and then our honors seminars, those type of classes that you can only find in honors, interdisciplinary, and again, very unique uh, type of topic. So with this path, uh, again, you get the essence of what we call honors. The only, mostly the difference is that you will not have to do those general education requirement classes as in honors. 
uh, and it would be a, a much reduced type of hours. Uh, again, of those of these 12, 13 hours, um, at least three of those would count towards uh, your major, because the this research uh, senior research project half of that counts towards most of the majors. Am I missing anything here, Dr. Ringham? I don't think so. I mean, the, the only thing I would add is um, that uh, nobody sticks around an extra semester to take honors. These all fit in somewhere. Everybody needs electives. Uh, so it's not the case that students, and in fact, many of our students end up graduating early, if anything. Um, so we can, there's a lot of flexibility here. It's not locked in stone. We can work with you on these. Um, and, you know, probably these course descriptions make no sense to you, but um, really the idea is to push you connect your major to other areas. So if you want to be a marine biologist, can you talk to non-scientists about what you're doing? If you want to be a teacher, what are your communication skills like? If you want to be a nurse, what are your communication skills like? If you want to study business, do you understand international culture and speak another language? Um, those are the kinds of ways in which we want to push you um, beyond your major to connect it to other areas. Um, As is always in every semester, you know, if you are taking a full load of classes in, say, I don't know, chemistry or biology, taking an honors class in a completely different topic at a scholarly level, right, it always adds. It's a distraction, but in an academic sense, in a scholarly sense. And I think we finished with this. Yeah. yeah, the last thing really is, I mean, we are all about connecting you, not just on campus, but off campus. And so these are some of our partners. We hold a class at the Cameron Art Museum. Um, we're developing an internship with the North Carolina Coastal Federation. Um, we have a course that goes to the Bald Head Island um, Conservancy over spring break. So um, we're, we're all about getting you out of the classroom and even out of the library and connecting you to places all around the community. Um, and we're highly accessible. So if you want to come visit or you want to Zoom or you want to talk on the phone, we will be the ones that do that in addition to our admissions person. So we love meeting you. We want to hear about what you're interested in and hear your story. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Meld. And thank you, Dr. Bingham. Next, we're going to go ahead and switch over. I believe Chad from Financial Aid will be giving us a quick presentation. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Chad Voorhees. I'm a senior financial aid counselor. Um, and I'm just going to go over some basics of the financial aid process and, uh, and some specifics to UNCW. Um, so let me share my screen real fast. All right, um, so really what I wanted to kind of start with is kind of the cost of attendance. Um, so, you know, I know that's the, one of the big changes that you'll see or, you know, you think of when you're going from a community college to, to a, a four-year uh, institution. Um, and, and if you were to look up the cost of UNCW, you'd, you'd find $25,812. Usually, like to tell people, you know, no one's ever paid that amount. Um, those are estimated costs of attendance, and they are uh, built up of, of direct and indirect costs. So the direct costs are going to be the uh, the things that you pay directly to UNCW. So tuition and fees, um, room and board if you're living on campus. Um, the indirect costs are are the things that are um, optional or uh, might not even pertain to you, and and so those th are things that. Uh, can be somewhat removed from the, the overall cost. Uh, you know, an example of that is, is health insurance. Health insurance is um, required at UNCW. So everyone has to have health insurance. If you have health insurance through an employer or your parents, then you don't have to get it through UNCW. Uh, so that's $2,600 that could be instantly removed off that uh, cost. Another example is, is transportation. Um, you know, we, when we're building these budgets, uh, we have to think of every student's situation. Um, so we have students that drive an hour each day from you know Jacksonville to, to get to class. Their transportation costs are going to be significantly more than than someone who lives on campus without a car. So you know there's there's a lot of things that can be um, brought down. If if you're a student that's full time and, and living on campus, usually your bill for the the whole year is about twenty thousand dollars. Um, just as an example, too, if you look up uh, Wake Tech Community College's estimated cost of attendance, uh, it's roughly like $19,168 or a little over $19,000 is what they state, where tuition fees for, for uh, you know, um, Wake Tech is, is 
2,432 for the year. So, you know, they have a lot of um, indirect costs built into their, their overall budget uh, that are kind of similar. So just make sure, you know, when you see those numbers that, you know, don't get scared off by that. Um, some information about transfer students, uh, you know, so just make sure when you uh, are coming into UNCW that you are aware that, you know, if you received aid or a specific aid at, uh, you know, last year, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get that exact same aid at UNCW. Every institution will award differently. Um, some aid is, isn't available at, you know, four-year institutions that is available at, uh, at community colleges. So just, just make sure that you're aware of that and, and aren't, uh, you know, counting on those funds. Um, aid is also uh, awarded kind of in the order that students um, or the you know, availability of funds, uh, you know, and so, uh, and then also based off what your FAFSA tells us. And the FAFSA is done yearly. So, you know, those, uh, those numbers or the need that, you know, the EFC that the FAFSA provides us um, can change drastically if, you know, if your parents or, or you got a, a job or your income changes drastically. Um, but I, we do recommend that you do the FAFSA every year. Uh, I don't know if, if everyone has done been doing the FAFSA or using the FAFSA um, at your current institution, but um, we always recommend you do the FAFSA. Uh, and we'll actually, um, I'll talk about the FAFSA a little more on the next one. Um, the next thing with the transfer students is uh, if you, once you do, are here, uh, you just want to make sure that you familiar, uh, familiarize yourself with uh, CNET and also are checking your email account. Uh, you know, I, I know with our office, um, we only really communicate to students or reach out to students through their UNCW email address. Uh, and, and sometimes there's some really important information that's uh, that's sent out. So you just want to make sure you are checking that um, at least weekly. I would say probably more than that because you know sometimes you could miss out on something important. Um, you know, and, and uh, so it's it's definitely worth checking. Um, we do have a scholarship application at UNCW that opens December 1st yearly and and runs through the priority date is March 1st. Um, so if you are planning on transferring next fall and have been accepted, uh, you still do have some time to, to get that application in. Um, I would recommend getting it in as, as soon as possible. Uh, and then uh, last thing is uh, to just familiarize yourself with the eBill. Uh, eBill is a program that will, uh, it's run through the student accounts and cashier's office. Um, and it's where you can uh, look at your overall bill, charges, make payments, um, set up for direct deposit and whatnot. Uh, and then to find more information, there's a little bit, uh, or you can go to this website. Um, so the FAFSA, the FAFSA opens October 1st of every eight year. Um, every student should do a FAFSA. Uh, I recommend, you know, it doesn't matter if your parents are, you know, you'll make 10,000, $10 million a year. I recommend doing the FAFSA uh, every year. Um, so the FAFSA for next eight year, um, so the, the 22-23 eight year, um, opened the previous or October 1st of 2021. So if, if you haven't done the FAFSA for next year, I would recommend doing it as, as soon as possible. Um, you know, even if you're not planning on or you decide not to go to UNCW, um, you can add up to 10 schools to the FAFSA. It also, uh, it um, a lot of institutions, UNCW included, do award institutional aid uh, in the order that students get that FAFSA in. So sometimes by doing it early can, can get you more funding. So it's always worth getting it done. I, I recommend doing it as soon as possible now and then making a, a mental note or a, a calendar you know, reminder to complete it as early in October as you can every year for the following eight years. Um, so just on that, once you do the FAFSA, uh, you, there is a, a, a chance you are selected for verification. And this, this is something that we will reach out to you to your school email. Um, it's important to try to get this completed. Uh, so this is where the Department of Education will um, select you uh, or ask us to verify the information that you put on the FAFSA is correct. Um, so we might contact you asking for additional documentation. And, and the earlier you can get that in, the better, the, you know, so we can hopefully get the uh, um, 
you know, get your file, your file completed. Uh, real quick, just talking about the types of financial aid. I know uh, some community colleges don't offer loans and whatnot, so I kind of want to go through it real quick. Uh, Pell grants are, are pretty consistent, like the Pell, or grants are pretty consistent. The Pell grant is something that's offered everywhere. Um, FSEOG is another fund that's a federal grant that is kind of uh, dependent on the school on how much to give or is available to give. Um, and then, you know, there, I think Dean uh, mentioned about the TEACH grant. That's another option uh, if you're looking into going into teaching. Um, state grants, uh, there's a community college grant that, you know, would only apply to community colleges, but then there's the NC Education Lottery Scholarship and the NC Need Based Grant. Um, all of these are, you're evaluated for all of these just by doing the FAFSA. That's why it's important to complete that FAFSA. Um, so scholarships, so there's there's two different types of scholarships. There's merit-based scholarships, uh, and that's strictly awarded on academic merit. Uh, and every student, uh, transfer student and incoming freshman is evaluated for merit-based scholarships by admissions. So uh, without having to do any sort of extra application, you should at least be looked at for, for those. Um, you know, the funding that's available does vary, so it's, it's not a guarantee. Uh, and then there's need-based scholarships. Need-based scholarships are awarded um, to families that are that demonstrate need, and that need is determined by completing the FAFSA. So you you definitely want to complete the FAFSA to to be looked at for that. Um, and then, at, like at UNCW, you, you would need um, to complete that scholarship application for a lot of these. Um, there's some scholarship search engines if to if you'd like to go through um, or you are know, looking for some. I, we also recommend, you know, use the cfnc.org website. Um, if you don't go to UNCW, make sure you reach out to the college you decide to attend and uh, and ask them about their uh, institutional scholarships process. Uh, and then a lot of times the untapped areas is um, local or local organizations. So, you know, Make sure you are uh, exhausting those. Talk to your parents to see if their employers offer scholarships or anything like that. Uh, student loans is, there's two different types of student loans. Uh, so every, every student will be offered student loans um, by doing the FAFSA. Uh, there's two different types, the subsidized and the unsubsidized. Um, the subsidized is based off, uh, you do have to have need, uh, you know, by, and again, that's determined by doing the FAFSA. But the subsidized loan is a zero percent interest while they're in while you're in school, and then starts accruing interest at, after you graduate. Um, it's currently the interest is a three point seven three interest rate. Um, you know that is set in the summer yearly, so it, it's not guaranteed to be that next year, but it's usually around that area. Um, the unsubsidized loan is a non need based, so everyone is guaranteed at least to get the unsubsidized loan. Um, that one does accrue interest while you're in school. Uh, it still is that 3.73 for at least this age year. And then, uh, you know, but it is growing while you're in school. Uh, the amounts that uh, students are offered are based off the, their progression th through school. So if you transfer as a, uh, as a junior, uh, let's say you would, you know, be a, a third or fourth year undergraduate. So you would be offered $7,500. How this, this amount is allocated um, depends on, on if you have need or not. Uh, you know, if, if you have no need, then this would be $7,500 of all unsubsidized. And then it can just vary depending on, on the need uh, that students have. Um, if, they, if you were to accept the loans, there is, uh, you would have to complete a couple other steps before they would pay on your bill. And then uh, lastly is, is last type of aid is work study. Um, work study is earned aid. Um, good thing with work studies, it is flexible. Uh, you, you know, uh, we know that you are students. Um, you know, no other job can you usually work a couple hours in between classes or you know, two or three job, or hours in between classes. Um, I, I know in our office, at least, we're very, uh, if our work study has tests or, um, you know, can't come in because of school related things, you know, we're very uh, understanding of that. Um, where if you worked at you worked at Best Buy, it might not be as uh, understanding. Um, so you just have, well, it's, a, it's definitely good um, and uh, a good option. You can also sometimes work in your, uh, 
your program of study uh, to gain, you know, to meet faculty to, to see if you even like the, you know, doing the job. So it's, it's usually a, a benefit. Um, and then lastly is just when you do attend, um, just make sure, you know, we're only, uh, we will only communicate with you directly and, and release information with you directly. So if you do want uh, your parents to be able to contact us or anyone else, you do have to make sure you add them as a proxy. Uh, and uh, that's the only way we'll um, release any sort of information about, uh, you know, your financial aid or, uh, you know, what, what you owe or um, the proxy actually covers grades and whatnot also. Uh, so we can answer questions at the end, but we are uh, a pretty accessible office. Uh, we, our office hours are 8.30 to 5 every, every day or Monday through Friday um, that you can walk in, sign in, and you'll see a counselor within you know, five minutes. Uh, we also have Zoom hours, uh, so from 8.30 to 5, I'm sorry, 8.30 to 4, uh, we have a counselor that's working on Zoom that you can click on the link and, and talk to someone directly. Uh, we also have a, a live counselor uh, chat, which is kind of like the, the help chats that you can talk to someone also um, for those same, same times. Uh, so feel free, if you have questions, you can email our office and uh, you'll get a response or, or you can call and, and talk to someone or, or use one of those other, other avenues. Awesome, thank you so much, Chad. Next, we're gonna have Chris. I think I saw him hop on from our Career Center. So Chris, go ahead and take it away. All right, was getting the, the screen share up here before I took my mute off. So apologize for the slight delay there, y'all. But as we move into hour two, I'm excited to be here with y'all, try to bring uh, you know a little excitement to the Career Center. I know that's not always the thing that's on the top of every student's mind, but I know working with many of our transfer students, thinking about what comes next is always going to be important. And I wanted to just do a, a quick shout out to everyone uh, from our academic units here today that shared the importance of getting experience not only in the classroom, but beyond the classroom. Because that's one thing in the Career Center that we pride ourselves on is helping you find a way to find a, a pathway to the life that you really want to live. And that's going to include things that are beyond the classroom. So I'd love to start off with just a picture of our beautiful campus here. Um, I know that y'all are in the area, so you know what it's like to be on the coast of, of North Carolina here, but as someone who just moved here in July, it still is something I appreciate each and every day. Um, but I want to tell you a little bit about what the Career Center, what we do in the Career Center. So a lot of folks think about us as the place where you get your resume reviewed, and that's kind of all you, you know about our office. And if I can be completely blunt here, we help with so much more than that, and our goal is to make sure that you know that we are here as a resource to help you in addition to all of your academic uh, units and, and partners in those different colleges. And what we help out with is really a variety of different things. You can see here on the screen, everything from major and career exploration. So understanding what you wanna do, what your interests are and how you can find a path to life that's meaningful for you. Uh, we help you with things that could be uh, you know, beyond your time here at UNCW as an undergraduate student. So that could be finding and applying for graduate school programs. We host a variety of different events and fairs throughout the year. Uh, yesterday, we hosted our clothes closet, which was a chance where students could stop by um, in the Fisher University Union and grab a set of professional dress clothes uh, for free. They've been donated by the faculty and staff here at UNCW for students to take. And uh, we had about 100 students stop by and grab some professional dress or, or dress clothes before our career fairs that are going to be next week. We're actually hosting our first in-person career fair since uh, late February, early March of 2020. So it's been about two years, but we have 75 employers that are coming to campus next week in a variety of different disciplines. Everyone from Fortune 500 companies to local employers uh, to green initiatives and sustainability uh, organizations, anything you can think about, we're here to help you out with. Um, and with those employers coming to campus, we're also hosting things in a virtual setting as well. We know that the pandemic has changed everything. And so we're looking for ways to always engage our students. So not only do we have, <clears throat> excuse me, those 75 employers coming to campus next week, also the first week in March, we have 32, uh, excuse me, 35, we just had three more registered today, 35 employers uh, attending our virtual fair the first week in March. And those are, are some of our fairs that are widespread, open to any major. We also host what I would call a little bit more boutique affairs. So we have, um, 
boutique fairs, excuse me, not affairs, but those boutique fairs are aimed at different populations. So we have our, our education, networking, and job fair coming up in the first week in uh, March. It's actually March 9th, which is interesting. That's our spring break, but it's also the spring break um, for some of our students, but not all of our education majors that are going to be out student teaching right now. Then we have 70 employers that are signed up, 70 different school districts from Southeast North Carolina, all the way up to places like Virginia, Georgia, um, as far away um, as you know those different places. So if you're interested in staying in the area, lots of opportunities. If you're interested in exploring other places, happy to help with that too. And we have 70 employers sign up for that Ed Fair. We also host other fairs. Um, currently, we host a nursing fair, which we're looking to expand to all students in our uh, College of Health and Human Services, as well as partnering with the Cameron School of Business on different fair specifically for the students in, in Cameron, but um, that's a big opportunity to explore what opportunities are out there, uh, what employers are looking to hire UNCW students, and you can also just see what you can do with your major. If you're concerned about how you're going to find internships, jobs, or, or shadowing experiences, we can help you with that. Um, and then those are the things that people think about for us. Resumes, cover letters, personal statements, interview prep, anything you can think of that's uh, related to finding that full-time position that you're interested in, we're happy to help you with that as well. Not only do we work with our students, but um, you are a Seahawk for life here, so we also work with all of our alumni. If you have something three, five, ten years down the road, we're happy to work with you about your career path then. Priorities may have shifted. We're happy to help you explore the possibilities that are right for you, whether that's through things like LinkedIn, where there are 75,000 UNCW alumni that are on LinkedIn, um, or other networking events like homecoming this week, working with uh, the Alumni Association to help students connect with alumni in different areas. Um, we also help with things like on-campus interviewing, um, and you can see here, deciding what career path is right for you. We do these things through a variety of different tools, not only meeting with our staff, um, which we have a staff of 12 uh, here in the Career Center, but also things like our Pathway U Career Assessment that can help you understand what your interest values and personality traits are and how that affects what your potential career opportunities might be. If you're looking for opportunities uh, with employers that are specifically recruiting UNCW students, Handshake is a fantastic tool that we use to connect you with those opportunities. Career Shift and Going Global are other tools that go out and find opportunities that can be collected in one place for you to apply for. We have a variety of opportunities for you to engage with our office, similar to financial aid. We are open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, um, or 8.30 to 5. And we also offer our career express lane. Those are 10 to 15 minute unscheduled appointments. You can stop by Monday through Friday from 2 to 4 in the afternoon, um, or Wednesday and Thursday mornings from 9 to 11. Other than that, our counselors are available for um, engaging with you for appointments. Those can be really as many appointments as you're interested in, as many as we can line up together. Um, my recommendation would be to start early with our office, um, as well as all the resources here that you're hearing about today. But the more you engage with us, the more bang for your buck you're getting when you, you come to UNCW. And we're happy to engage with you in a variety of different areas. We have tools here like Candid Career Big Interview, our planning guide that's about an 85 page document which can be a little overwhelming, we understand. So let's work together to see what parts of that are most applicable to you when. And we also offer our certified internship program, uh, which is a, a great opportunity for you to fulfill your explorations beyond the classroom uh, requirements. It's notated on your, your transcript and we help you make meaning of those internship experiences as well. And all of these can be really helpful, but you say, Chris, I really need to explore what opportunities are out there for me. We have another tool on our website called What Can I Do With a Major In? And this is specifically targeted to UNCW majors. This is something we've built in-house that's just for UNCW majors. We work with our alumni association to see where folks in their major have gone on to their careers. And we also have not only the online resource, but we host an in-person um, event that's similar to this where we actually bring employers back in and that's happening at the end of February. Um, so for our College of Arts and Sciences where you can talk with people that are alumni from UNCW. These are also Seahawks that have gone out into their career and can talk about what their experiences in the Honors College, in the College of Arts and Sciences, in Cameron, in Chess, in um, Watson, all these different experiences and how that helped them be successful in their career. And so 
if I could leave you with one thing, it's that you don't have to do it all on your own. We have lots of great resources, not only in the Career Center, but in all of our, our offices and all of our academic units across campus. And we are really excited to work with you. We really hope that you'll choose UNCW um, and, and use the resources that are available to you. Um, just put on the screen here my, my name and contact information. Please feel free to reach out to me. Again, I serve as the Associate Director in the Career Center, um, but I would be happy to connect with you and, and help you explore any of our resources that I went through quickly today, but happy to work together moving forward. Thank you so much, Chris. Yeah, that what I can do a major with is phenomenal. It makes me want to study just about everything we have to offer. I'm like, I could do that job. So thank you so much for sharing that. I'll go ahead and wrap us up with a few items that might fill in the gaps of kind of where UNCW is. So if you choose to study within our College Watson, um, Watson edu Education, whoa, I screwed that up. Um, our Watson College of Education, Cameron College of Business, anywhere, um, where would you be, right? So our UNCW main campus, as you can see, my favorite thing about our campus, we're the only coastal institution, so we are near the beach, but that's not the only thing that is there for sure. So tons of stuff always going on campus. I know some of our colleges highlighted the clubs and organizations, so they're always putting on fun events on campus. But apart from that, we do have our historic riverfront district. One of my all time favorite things, just going down there, tons of places to eat. The film studies industry is amazing within Wilmington in general. That new riverfront park amphitheater is incredible. So that just opened last year in the summer. So that's been amazing to see grow. And then of course, just art district and then our 15 mile cross city trail. So I know several of my partners just, just, just talked about how much they love Wilmington. So you're very much a part of the community on campus and off, which I adore. Now, switching in real quick to online education. So I know our colleges mentioned all of their programs, but if it is something you cannot move to Wilmington for, that is unfortunate, but we do have some distance education options. So those online bachelor degree options are listed on the screen. Um, and keep in mind the elementary ed and middle grades ed, they do have some restrictions on partnerships within counties. So if you are interested, reach out to myself or even I know Dean had listed his contact information. So feel free if you reach out to him or myself, I can kind of help you see what that looks like and see if that is an attainable option. And then we do have our online accelerated programs. Those are within our College of Health and Human Services. And so if you had more questions regarding that, definitely feel free ask those now, you can reach out to myself, or we do have some folks in our office specifically for those accelerated programs. Um, and then our Onslow County Extension Program, that is specific and you would have to live in Onslow County. However, all of those programs are still accredited just like our main campus options um, and phenomenal and definitely still a part of that community, even though you'd be completing that from your home. So how can you transfer to the Seahawk community and start one of these amazing programs? So transfer admissions criteria, we are rolling admissions, just to give you an idea, and I'll go through what's required on the next slide, but all we look for is going to be 24 hours completed or in progress, and to be considered competitive, we do look for at least six hours of college level English and then three hours of college level math. And I'm always more than happy to help specify what would be more helpful for your program. And then we look for a cumulative GPA of a 2.5. Biggest piece on this slide is we do recommend you apply by our priority deadline. So those deadlines on the right-hand side of the screen are actually this summer or fall, if you're interested, is gonna be March 1st. And then our spring entry is always gonna be October 15th. So like I mentioned, we're rolling admissions. So once I receive these documents on the left, we'll get you a decision typically within four to six weeks. So we will require an official high school transcript, any post-secondary transcripts. So if you've attended somewhere besides Wake Tech, We'll need those as well. And of course, military, if that's applicable to you. So some incredible resources to help you. If you reach out to me, I'm definitely going to send you and point you in this direction. So the biggest one's going to be our North Carolina Community College 
baccalaureate degree plans. So this is a great way to look and maximize your time at Wake Tech and see how the classes you take there will fit into maybe our accountancy program or our specific middle grades education program. So you can really dive deeper and make sure that you utilize your time and money at Wake Tech and transfer that transfer process becomes a little bit more smooth. And then we do our, have our transfer credit equivalency tool. I'll actually kind of show you a little bit what that looks like on the next slide. So you can literally go in, select North Carolina, Wake Tech, and see exactly how your credits will transfer. So if it comes over directly as the math you need, or maybe an elective, you can kind of help switch those things around. And then our Pathways to Excellence Guaranteed Admission Program, I'm actually going to touch on that in just a second. So I'll kind of hold off on explaining that in detail. So that credit equivalency tool is phenomenal. And especially if you've maybe attended another school, I had a student that also went somewhere in California. So you can pull up that school and see exactly what class you've taken and how it comes over. So this is a really, really great way to just check to see how many credits you might have already. Um, Cause for Wake Tech or community colleges, we cap at 64 credit hours. So that's always something to keep in mind. If you think you wanna keep going at Wake Tech, maybe look to see how many credits are going to be accepted. So this is a helpful way. And if you aren't finding a class, please reach out to myself. And I'm always happy to look into that a little deeper if it is not listed. Now, the Pathways to Excellence program, this is a co-admission or guaranteed admission agreement with 47 of the community colleges actually in North Carolina, specifically Wake Tech being a big partner with this program. So it is guaranteed admission for transfer students that are completing an Associate of Arts, Science, or Engineering with a cumulative GPA of a 2.5. So if you're meeting that criteria, so you're within your first year, we recommend go ahead and complete this next process. So the benefits are gonna be that you're gonna have access to me, myself, and I can offer pre, basically enrollment advising. So if you're just getting started, I can kind of look through those degree plans with you for your desired major, and maybe those requirements that'll help you be competitive for nursing, let's say. So that's a big help with that transition from Wake Tech to UNCW. Um, and then, of course, we're looking at designing events specifically for students within this cohort. Pre-COVID, it was hopefully going to be on campus. I'm looking at doing some virtual options, but of course, I mentioned I'm at Wake Tech's campus Mondays and Tuesdays, so feel free to always stop by as well. And then we do give you priority consideration for transfer merit-based scholarship, so that will put a tag on your account and give you that that priority review for that merit-based scholarship. And then it will also waive your application fee, which is $80. So that's another big perk in and of itself. So how to enter? All you have to do is complete a letter of intent form. It's online. It's basically saying you're interested in UNCW, telling us what do you wanna study, verifying that GPA and your associate's degree. And as I mentioned, we do encourage you to complete that within your first year. So first semester is the best, but as soon as possible, just that way you can meet with me and get some benefits and maybe meet some other students that are transferring from Wake Tech to UNCW. So a great way to get connected before you transfer. Now, quickly, I wanted to run through the timeline of how it would look if you choose UNCW. So if you're transferring, there are some recommended milestones that we have you complete. So the ACA 122, which is something that all community colleges now will have you complete typically within your first year. This will be a great way to help dive into some of those things I mentioned um, with even out without my help and possibly someone at Wake Tech will be there to help you do that. Um, and then of course, that excellence form, so Pathways to Excellence will help you start that process establish a meeting with me, and then attend maybe one of these events, um, which is great. So if you're doing that today, you have already been able to check that off your list. Um, and then, of course, I had Chad already discussed FAFSA. I know I've had a lot of questions recently about how that works for transfer students, so he did kind of dive into that really well today. But of course, if you haven't submitted FAFSA, go ahead and do that now. Um, the sooner, the better 
for sure. As far as scholarships go, the deadline for applications, um, you must apply and be admitted by March 1st, and most of those close March 1st as well. So the sooner you're able to go ahead and do that, the better. And our merit-based scholarships are within that timeline. So the sooner that you can apply before our March 1st deadline, the better off you'll be for those type of things. Now, once you're admitted, we do have a degree audit completed, which will review all of your credits and give you an official kind of standing of where you're at. So like how many credits are accepted and then where you're at for your desired program. So that typically does take about two weeks after being admitted. So keep that in mind as well. I'm always happy to kind of give you more of an unofficial review of where you're at and you'll get that official audit about two weeks or so after being admitted. And then once you have applied and been admitted, we do have a great enrollment checklist. I can walk you through it, um, but you'll pay a deposit to kind of secure your spot and register for our transfer orientation and really get the ball rolling from there. Um, within orientation, you'll kind of move on to the next step for advising and they do a great job at helping you through those final steps of becoming enrolled. So that is all I have, hopefully covered a lot of good material for general how to be admitted, um, but my information and contact information is on the screen. So of course, if you are watching the recording as well, feel free to reach out to myself. And as you can see, UNCW is definitely that got that family oriented feel. Everyone is willing to help. So even if I don't know the answer, I can reach out to any one of these partners and they are always more than happy to correct myself if I said something wrong or really help me get you the right information. So if I can't help, I have a great community supporting myself. So feel free to reach out to me and I'll go ahead and I'll open the floor to questions. Um, and we can kind of, you can throw those in the chat, however we wanted to do that. Jessica, I don't know if you wanted to read those aloud to myself, but we will go ahead, I'll pause and wait to see if any. Yeah, so um, thank you to our attendees who are joining us. If you would like, if you have any questions, feel free to throw those in the Q&A box. Um, and we'll give you just a minute or two to do that if you have any questions. If not, um, Cindy and I will go through some of the more frequently asked questions that we get from transfer students um, in case you're not even really sure what to ask. All right, so I don't see any coming through the Q&A box. Um, so Sydney, um, can you talk to the attendees about when is a good time for students to transfer to UNCW? Yeah, which is a very common question. Um, so a lot of times students always make the assumption the associate's degree as a transfer student is required. It is not. You really can transfer at any point once you've started at the community college. I always point out our average transfer student does have about 41 credit hours. So obviously the more the better and the closer you're to that 24 hour mark, we're not gonna need to lean on the high school information quite as heavily. So associate's degree is always my biggest suggestion, especially with the Pathways to Excellence option, just because you're gonna come in and have your associate's degree completed, which is around 60 credit hours, which should put you at about a junior academic status. So that's something to always consider. Um, and of course, if you meet with me, you'll be typically pretty good, off, well off with the requirements that you need. So that is a great question. All right, and for another uh, common question we get from students in terms of the application process. Um, so we are working with students who are coming from community college, so you might have um, multiple transferable credit hours, you might even be coming with an associate's degree. But if that's the case, then you do students still need a copy of their official high school transcripts. Yes, so if a student, um, 
So we require high school transcripts of all applicants. Um, so the exception really is only if a student has a bachelor's degree, and this would be their second, um, because it gives us a lot of different things. We look for minimum course requirements, um, graduation date, and we also verify for a foreign language requirement. So there's several kind of reasons that we're looking for that, that high school transcript. So yes, it is required unless you already have your bachelor's degree and are pursuing a second. Great. And this is um, this next question that we get commonly is a great one as well. Um, and some of our campus partners have touched on this and, and can feel free to jump in. But um, a lot of times students wonder if they're applying to their major when they apply to, UN, to UNCW um, or if their major requires an additional application. Absolutely, which is a great Great question. I should have actually mentioned it on our application process slide, but we don't admit by major. You're still applying as like a degree seeking student. So you'll you can select the human resources management. Um, so we admit you more as like an intended major, and then you'll have a second application process or declaration process, just kind of depending on the program. So depending on what you want to study, they will have a kind of two-part process um, for you to complete once you do meet the requirements, if you're not already. Great. And this last one that I have is probably one of my favorite questions, which is how can transfer students learn about UNCW um, after they transfer in and once they're here as current students? Absolutely. And this is something I was a transfer student myself and regretted. It's just getting involved. So if you already have interests that you know of, we have well over 300 clubs and organizations. I love that Chris highlighted some, some different options within Cameron, just because there are great options for you to get involved in things you're interested in with other students interested in the same thing. Um, so that's something that I highly encourage. And then we do even offer a transfer seminar course that would help you learn more about UNCW and things going on that, um, maybe you'd had no idea were happening. So those are a couple of great options that come to mind. Awesome. Thanks, Simi. Um, and I wanted to make sure our participants also saw um, the information in the chat as far as our Honors College would love to meet you um, if you're interested with a one-on-one -on -one with Zoom, phone, or in-person. Um, and at this time, we're reaching the end of our kind of formal webinar here. Um, but I would love to ask our campus partners if you can just throw the contact information in the chat so the students can copy and paste that if they need it, um, as well as if you want to list any events you have coming up. And then we'll also open up the floor in case there are any frequently asked questions um, from our campus partners that they want to go over before we formally end the webinar, which we'll do um, right at 1130.
Awesome. So again, a huge thank you to all of our attendees um, for being with us this morning, learning more about UNCW. Um, also a huge thank you to our panelists for being here and supporting our Wake Tech Community College transfer students. Um, at this time, we'll end the formal webinar and we will be sure to share the recording. So if you'd like to refer back to this, you can. Um, please feel free to reach out to any of our colleagues here that can help you in your transfer process and um, go Seahawks. Have a great rest of your day.